Mate, you know, I was just watching footage of uh, the Brian Jonestown massacre uh, getting into a punch up <laughs> stage. Um, yeah, I did, I did catch a bit of that. Yeah, so um, it, it, anything that dramatic ever happened to Frankenbook? <laughs> uh, no. No, thankfully. No, we've never really had an on stage dust up. Uh, one of my fir- in my first band, I I did get into a bit of a bit of a scuffle. Not nothing to nothing to that degree, but um, with the drama, he threw his sticks at me, and I threatened to throw my microphone at his head at one on one occasion. But um, <laughs> no, we never really had any of those kind of dust ups. But yeah, I was I sort of I'd be curious to know what that was all about, like why that happened. I just sort of watched it. I wasn't really listening or anything, but yeah, it got pretty pretty crazy. Well, he, um, this is nothing new for them. Um, they did a documentary in the mid-2000s with the Dandy Warhols called Dig, and that also had footage of the Brian Jonestown massacre getting into a brawl on stage. So when people, this video started going around, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've seen that. Oh, wait, that happened last week? What the fuck? <laughs> yes, in Australia, all, all places. Which, which yeah, band, you know. Which band it's in the uh, Australian scene would be funniest to uh, have a biff, you reckon? Hmm. Uh, it'd be pretty hard to go past Blood Duster. I'm sure they'd put on quite a spectacle. <laughs> Jason yeah. being nude the whole yeah, time. I wouldn't mind saying that. <laughs> I'd pay yeah. to see that. You'd, um, yeah, I, I'm, only, I'm only watching that if Jason's nude. I'm sure. <laughs> no, yeah. We actually played with uh, Remains a couple of weeks ago in uh, Sunbury. That was pretty cool. I haven't seen Tone for a long time, actually. Yeah, no, it was good. It's good to see those blokes. And um, old mate from uh, the drummer. What's his name? Bloody hell. He, yeah, no, his name's elude me. That's embarrassing. But, um, yeah, no, we're good. We're good. It's good to catch them. Yeah, I laughed my ass. I interviewed... Uh, tone last year or the year before because they were the first ever band i ever saw at an indoor gig uh it was on the cunt tour in 2004 i was right. like 18 years old and was just not ready uh, <laughs> was not ready. <laughs> um and he told me that he used to be a bouncer at the ding dong the ding dong lounge. yeah right <laughs> wow <laughs> shit. Interesting. what um, the old ding dong Wow. Oh, yeah. that. Is that still around? I'm assuming no. not. No. No, I haven't heard that name for a long time. Yeah. Now, mate, you're releasing uh, the live recording of the 25th anniversary show, which um, took place around this time. I mean, you and I had a chat around this time last year about it, so it would have been yep. about a year ago. Um, it was indeed. That would have been a, a pretty pretty emotionally intense gig what was it like uh it was awesome man um yeah no it was a really good night uh it went off without a hitch miraculously um yeah i still sort of look back at it and just can't believe we actually pulled it off that you know not only did we get everybody to agree to it to begin with but then uh everyone was able to make it on the night like it only would have taken one guy to say, and, and and there was a couple of really crucial guys that we needed for it to work, which was predominantly Timmy, the bass player, who was in the four, the four of the five lineups, and um, and Mick, the original drummer. So and Mick hasn't played Mick, Mick hadn't played drums. He pretty much gave up playing drums when he left the band, you know, five years ago. So for him to sort of come back, we kind of got him. Got him. He was coming on in for a song or two, and then when I sort of said to as I was like, "Mate, we got to just go the whole hog with this thing and and just see if we can get everybody and get all the five lineups back together," which seemed like a ridiculous idea. But once once Mick had sort of agreed to it, and he was quite enthusiastic about it, that then just the pieces started to fall, fall into place. But um, for a guy that hadn't played drums in five years, much very much, he absolutely killed it. Like. He's probably one of the better shows he's done. Like he just, <laughs> he was he was fantastic. So, so yeah. So it was yeah. It was a really cool night, and I've just 
just finished putting the finishing touches on on the the whole show, the the the, the, the video editing. So I was stupid enough to put my hand up, and I actually wanted to, but. Had I have really, I should have known how much work was going to be involved in editing the, the all the, the the video and doing the mixing of the audio. So it's been eight months worth of work in my spare time, just chipping away at it. And we had a few issues to begin with. Um, just yeah, it took me ages to get the the video back. The guy's computer crashed and he couldn't get the, the video for a while. And then we had other issues with the audio, but. We've managed to pull it all together, and she's finally coming out. And um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's come up really good. I'm really happy with it. So you're putting it out just as a um, uh, as an album, and putting the the video up on YouTube, or yeah. So I mean, the, the the whole idea was we we wanted to film it, and as obviously for prosperity, and and um. Yeah, so I had uh, Stephen from Riff Crew, who's a guy down here that films a whole bunch of local shows. He's quite prolific, and he actually did the the last live sort of recording that we that we did at the uh, at the Bendigo Hotel. He came and did that, so we asked him to come back and do this one. And uh, we had another couple of friends who turned up on the night. Some old fans who have been in the band for years. They wanted to film too, so we sort of took took a took both lots of footage and, and, and put them together. And then the audio just came out really good too. And so similar to the same live sort of thing that we put out with the, uh, at, at the last one. So we'll, we'll just put it out as a, as a live album as well. So it's coming out as a live album, but then it's the whole show is going to be able to be watched on, on YouTube as well. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So what and yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, I was going to say, it's, it's, um, if you're, I mean, if you're a Frank and Buck fan, it's it's something that you really should see. Like it was something that, like, I don't think anyone, especially people who are into the band back in the in the early days and the cup the first couple of lineups, I don't think anybody ever expected to <laughs> that those guys would ever come back and and do something, especially the original lineup. Man, the fact that that actually even happened is, um, yeah, it's quite, it's it's something. Because I mean, Azar and, and and Hux didn't speak for years, for well over 10, 15 years. Yeah. And they've, they've actually rekindled their friendship, and they're really good friends now. So, yeah. So, so yeah, if you if you've been in the Franco block in any of any of the incarnations over the last twenty five years, it's definitely something worth checking out for sure. Well, it's a good thing um, the gig went off without a hitch and didn't go off without a hutch. Uh, uh, no, it wouldn't have been the same if he wasn't there. <laughs> and he was a uh, smart mouthed as, as, uh, as, yeah. <laughs> as ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I've just been watching back and pissing myself at some of the little comments and remarks and things that he said. He was always pretty well known for his uh, smart mouth on stage. So, yeah. <laughs> Pretty what, funny, but um. So, what are the uh, what are the band's plans for next year at this stage? Um, look, we're just getting signs in the fire. Um, it's been a it's been a bit of a weird year for us this year. It was a, not as didn't really go as ex, sort of expected. Just some personal stuff came up with some people, and just it just you know I've spent most of my time concentrating on this. We've done the odd show here and there, but um. Yeah, you know, looking to sort of ramp things up again next year. But, um, yeah, and starting to work on some new material. So we've got maybe, yeah, three or four new songs sort of in the pipeline. And so, yeah, it's definitely trying to get something new out would be, yeah, we're well overdue. The last album's a couple of years old now. So we'll definitely get something out next year and just try and, um, you know, we're looking at trying to get on some decent shows. Lord knows there's enough... Uh, international bands coming out next year, so you know, best part of uh, best course of action is to try and get it some supports because yeah. the local scene is going to get smashed. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's at plague proportions. It's really <laughs> out of control, and and for from all uh, from all accounts and from what I've heard, it's it's just not. This is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like it's just it's just for the last sort of you know few months, it's just been relentless with the with the announcements and like. 
my personal opinion on that is that it's an untenable situation and it's it cannot be sustainable. I mean, if it can, it will be quite a miracle, especially in the current economic climate. You can't expect people to be forking out all this money to go see all these international bands. And we're not talking, I mean, there seems to be quite the outrage at the price for the Mr. Bungle shows, which is like 170 bucks. Yeah. You go see Bungle and, and the Melvins, which obviously you're getting two headliners, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty nuts. You know, it's funny. I mean, they say that, but, um, you know, I happily pay the 165 bucks to go see Slayer, their farewell tour in 2019, because they, they had uh, Anthrax and Behemoth with them. But that um, well, yeah. that Slayer show was one of the best gigs of my life. So, but yeah, look, yep. I, I'm hearing you. Like, every time I see one of these announcements, I just think people are already like, barely scraping by right and they're just yeah. going like oh my god my wallet can't can't keep up with these announcements like surely some of these big events are going to come down here and flop and then we're going to do you know because people just can't afford it yeah like, i don't know uh, that, that's what i see happening as as this thing continues because it's it's a, it's like a uh it's, it was a similar situation to what was happening in the local scene here pre-pandemic where the, the it's just getting completely flooded. There's just so many shows on that promoters are just uh, cutting each other's lunch and it started to become a real problem and I think that's kind of what's going to happen in the long run with the bigger promoters that they're all going to start cutting each other's lunch. I mean, they're now announcing shows in October, November, all trying to get in before everybody else announces mm. theirs and you know i just see that yeah it's 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 quite it's very it's awesome for the punter in terms of you know this it's never been like this before i remember when i was a kid like in year 12 year, year 12 you know back in like the late 90s you'd be lucky to get two like sepulture and pantera mm. in, in a year that was it like you know and now it's those level of bands sepulture playing in melbourne tonight yeah. And, um, you know, that level of bands is constantly every freaking weekend. And it's like, uh, you know, and so there's that. And then there's just the local scene, which is just getting pretty hammered by that, you know. No one's got money to go watch local bands when they're shelling out all this coin to go see the internationals. But, yeah, it is yeah. what it is. I guess it's just something that's sort of uh, probably just a because of the pandemic, you know, they've all of these shows that were sort of postponed and, and you know, they're just getting getting in now while the going's good. Yeah, I, I compared the, you know, the live music scene recovery to being like a uh, trying to get a lawnmower started. You know, we spent 2021, you know, the engine had splutter a few times and then stopped. Splutter a few times and then it stopped. 20, January 2022... No, just it has not stopped. No, 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 it hasn't. No, and um, yeah, about like the, the pandemic. If we're just talking about the local scene, like that that period of time could have been such a such a a, a prosperous time for the local scene here had we have not had these insane, ridiculous government mandates and restrictions on our movement, which we all know now is, you know, well, completely overblown and utterly ridiculous because mm. we didn't have any international bands coming out. It would have been awesome for us if, if we were actually able to be out there and playing shows during that period. But, um, yeah, no, that didn't happen. And Uncle Dan now, says no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's been interesting. But, um mm. So yeah, so to answer your question, that's that's kind of the plan. Get some new stuff out, try and get on some good shows, and just keep the ball rolling, man. Easy. Yeah. No worries, man. Oh, look, um, uh, best of luck with the album. Um, I can tell that you've put a lot of work into it. So um, yeah, man. Awesome. And, uh, Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah, I have no doubt I'll be seeing you. Fairly so, up this way fairly soon at some point next year. That would be good, man. Yep, it'd be nice to get uh, get back up to Brisbane again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think 
Um, no, no. The next thing we've sort of got in, interstate is in Newcastle, I believe. Nothing in, in Brisbane just yet, but always a pleasure to go up there. So, yeah, we'll work on it and I'll let you know. Easy, man. All right, man. Take care of yourself, Thanks, man. Talk to you you soon. too, mate. Bye. Bye, man.